What's up guys, Lego here with Dyna Demos, and I know it's been a minute, and I know it's been even longer since I made a Dyna install video, but finally, I'm bringing you guys another one. So in today's video, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be installing a dual gauge pod mount kit, and I'll show you guys the reason I'm doing it, but if you guys happen to like the video, please make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. All right guys, a little bit of a backstory first. So if you guys follow this Dyna build at all, you guys probably already know that I have the dual gauge mount kit uh, from k &S Customs. Now what it does is it relocates uh, your gauges from down here on the dash to up here on the handlebars. Now it kind of serves two purpose. One, I can tell how fast I'm going without looking down. And then two, I just like the way that it looks. I think it honestly, it looks a lot better, um, but being that I don't have to look down and I can look up, see how fast I'm going. Uh, I like that because I hate freaking looking down and taking my eyes off the road. Now I've been running these for quite a while. I'm not sure exactly how long because I did have a different mount kit for the T-bar setup that I was running. But then when I switched to the Big Al's risers, I had to get a new mount kit, but my buddy and me, all we did was swap. So it was pretty dope. Uh, I didn't have to buy another mount kit. Now, you guys can see right here, it cracked. Now, the reason it cracked was I wasn't running this spacer kit from Big L's. Now, you could just get this from a hardware store, but I just got it from Big L's just because they had it and it was only like 30 bucks, so I was like, whatever. So the way that I had it mounted before was in here, and I didn't even know that I had it mounted wrong until I reached out to KNS and he was like, Hey, the reason it cracked is because you actually mounted it wrong. Get this uh, spacer kit from Big Al's. And I was like, oh, duh. Uh, so I reached out to him and he sent me a few things, which I'll show you guys now. These are also all chipped up. So I'm actually glad to be getting rid of these things. All right, guys. So let me show you the updated goods. First of all, I don't think he used to have the logo on the box. So he's getting pretty professional over here. Uh, but these are the new gauge pods. So you can see the difference already. Uh, he's got his logo etched in there. That wasn't a thing before. Also, he has the harness already routed through you. So this is gonna make a huge difference. If you guys refer to my first video, which I'll put up there, I had to deep in the connectors in order in to install the gauges. But now, since he already has the harness ran through, all I'm gonna have to do is take the gauges from out here, or if you never had this done, take the gauges from your dash and just put them in there and connect them. That's it, it's gonna make it super easy. Uh, if you guys watched the first video, I had to deep in the connectors, run the harness through, and then, uh, then I could finally install the gauges. But since he makes his own harness now, which it's plenty long, uh, and I only have a six inch rise, or six and a half inch rise, and then it's probably like plus two or three, uh, just cause the gauges are up here. Uh, that's definitely enough harness. So I'm not even worried about that. That's awesome. Makes his own harness, makes the gauge pods. He's got everything. And then uh, I'm pretty excited to install these. So these are the visors. He shipped these out for free uh, just so I could show you guys what they look like installed on the bike. So I'm gonna show you guys how easy this install is gonna be with those connectors already ran through. So first things first is I'm just gonna take out the gauges. Now I'll pull a little bit of slack through, if I can get it. So you can disconnect the gauge. Try not to break the plastic. Boom. Now I need to take off the seat, only because I'm gonna have to take off the dash. So there's one bolt under here that I'm gonna need to take out. So I'm gonna take off the seat to make it easier. Now there's only three bolts that hold on your dash. You got two up here and then one down here, which that one is an Allen key. Oh yeah, do not drop this on your paint because then you will be sad. 
Now pull your dash off. And, and try not to lose any hardware while you're doing this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect a couple things. So I'm gonna disconnect this right here. Now retain this, you're gonna need it. I'm honestly, I'm not sure what this is, but I know that you need it and it's gonna connect to the harness. And then your harness also connects here. So disconnect that. Got that disconnected. All right, cool, we're almost done. I'm just gonna leave that right there. Now I wanna show you guys this part. So the harness that you need to remove is most likely gonna be ran into the neck. Um, and I stuffed this down in there. So all you have to do is find the connector down in the neck and then you're gonna disconnect it and the whole harness will come apart. Now you might have one of these installed. So uh, keep your grommet so you guys can reinstall it. Okay, I'll explain this to you guys. So I'm gonna have to end up deep pinning this harness. Now you probably won't have to do it, but since I ran it through the triple tree, this connector is just not gonna fit. And I'm gonna deep pin these ones rather than deep pinning this one because I've done these connectors before. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm not gonna show it. You guys shouldn't have to do this step but I have to do it because I ended up routing it through here. So I'm gonna do that now. So when you guys check back on the video, it's already gonna be done. Just gonna drop the bolts in. Drop the bolts in. I'm not gonna worry about the harness at the moment. Put your uh, spacer on. Do the same thing on the other side. Thread it. Make sure it starts on both sides. Now I don't have to worry about it falling. So now I'm gonna tighten it down. Okay right, guys, so now I got the speedometer. I'm just gonna put it through the visor. I'm gonna connect the harness and it should only go on one way. So you can't mess it up. Clicked in. I'm gonna install that, and then I'm gonna install the screws. Now all I need to do is connect the rest of the harness, so I'm gonna do that now. All right guys, so I had this great idea. Before I finish tightening up the dash and routing all the wires, everything's connected. So I'm gonna make sure it works first before I tighten everything up. So here it is. So far, so good. Let's see, you can cycle through everything. So I don't think anything's screwed up. Low range. Huh. I feel like that's messed up. What, what if I start the bike and it goes away though? Okay guys, let me talk to you about what just happened. So I turned on my bike. And then I was cycling through all of the uh, um, things on the uh, speedometer, like it has a clock, it's got what gear you're in, mileage, everything like that. But then my fuel range said low and I knew that wasn't right. So all I did was reset the cannon plug 
I'm just kidding, the connector, for those of you guys in aviation, maybe you think that was funny, huh? Uh, but I reset these two things and then boom, popped up. So I think we're good to go. Now I'm gonna start buttoning everything up. All right guys, so what I'm doing now is I'm gonna check to make sure that the harness that I just installed didn't limit the movement of my handlebars. So I'm gonna go all the way left, nothing. All the way right, nothing. I don't feel anything like tugging, like feels like it's pinched or anything like that. So I'm just gonna talk about the harness again. Or I'm gonna talk about the gauge plugs again real quick. And then that's gonna be it for the video guys. Okay, first things first is I just gotta go around these real quick and show you guys how clean they came out. So. There you go, no paint chips. There's the harness, see how clean that looks? And I did end up running it through here uh, just cause it came out way cleaner. So let's take a look at the front. Oh yeah, that looks good. It's not cracked anymore. It came out real good. All right guys, so I'm gonna briefly touch on some of the key features for the KNS Customs Gauge Pod Kit. So first things first, obviously the, uh, the visors themselves, that's gonna prevent reflection from the sun off the gauge. Uh, so I'm pretty excited to go ride with these now. Uh, I never really noticed a reflection off of them just because the way that uh, KNS already angles the bracket, you don't really get a lot of reflection. So I never really noticed reflection, but I'll be curious as to when I go out and ride with these, if I notice any at all now. Uh, so I'll pay attention to that. And then the harness already being routed cuts down probably a good 20 minutes of like depinning them and repinning them, especially if you're not familiar with that. Uh, I once again depinned mine, but that was because I have so many um, wires already routed through that triple tree, that top triple tree that I just can't fit that uh, big plug through there. So. If you don't have to depin it, you're gonna save yourself probably a good 20 minutes. The longest part of this install is honestly uh, routing the wires and just getting them to how you like it because I'm pretty picky. Uh, overall, um, I'd rate this install, you know, like easy. Anybody could do it. And if you wanna check out a full length install and that's from already, that's from having the gauges mounted on the dash to uh, the handlebars, then check out our video here. I'll post it. That's the full install. Now this one was kind of cheating because I already had them up off the dash, but it's basically the same exact steps that you would take minus uh, some of the things on the dash, but got a video for that. So if you guys are looking uh, to do it from the beginning, please check out that video. And if you guys happen to like this video, please make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.